Good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. James and Team Finish Strong, how's everybody doing today? It's a, uh, a stormy Saturday here on the East Coast. Some folks are looking very carefully at this tropical storm slash hurricane making its way up, and I think we're going to get some we're going to get something from it too this weekend here in the Carolinas. So, so we are definitely watching that with great interest. Um, but here in Zwift, the weather's always beautiful. Well, actually, it rains sometimes in Zwift too. But at least your kid doesn't get wet. At least not from at least not from precipitation. Maybe perspiration, right? But uh, so today we are doing the Mega Pretzel. Never done this route before. I'll be getting this badge today. Those of you who are watching, want to jump in and try this out for yourselves? Come along. Feel free to come along. It's uh, over 100 kilometers, so we are going to be doing a metric today with lots of climbing involved, too. More climbing than Mount Vontu. So picture Montu, Mount Vontu plus a metric thrown in. That's what we're in for today. So I truly uh, titled this uh, ride today uh, in, the, in the correct sense that I don't know if I'm going to complete it or not, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm, I'm going to try to take it slow and steady. I think pacing today is going to be... Uh, the key factor for me, and I'm already underway here, so I'm going to do my warm-up. No sense doing a warm-up before the ride. I might as well make the ride and the warm-up the same. So, getting started here. Those of you who are interested in joining along, feel free to feel free to uh, give me a ride on or a shout-out today in Watopia. You'll probably see me circling around. Pretty, pretty much going to hit all of Watopia today. Uh, aside from Alpha Zwift, that is reserved for the Uber Pretzel, which will be featured in an upcoming broadcast, maybe, if I can do this one, right? So, um, also, I have to uh, 
let you guys know right off the start, I'm sorry about the no extra noise. My trainer, I think, has not been up to the challenge of doing 100% uh, difficulty. Uh, normally it's been set to 50% and it's been fine, but uh, setting it to 100% I think has, uh, has, has shortened its lifespan prematurely. So I am uh, not sure how much longer I will be with you guys on li live on Zwift. Uh, and I'm starting a, uh, a new trainer fund. So if you guys want to donate to the cause, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, so if you see me go dark here uh, on Zwift, that's why. Um, there's really not a lot of trainers to be found out there in the world. I actually was looking at uh, kickers out there, and I could not find a single kicker out there in the world right now at the moment. So there, uh, there's definitely some shortages, I think, probably due to the surge in popularity of both the kicker as well as um, indoor riding with this pandemic. Appreciate the ride on. Um, so we are getting on right on their way. Are they, they throwing me right into the climbing to start with? This is interesting. This is a, uh, okay, I know where we are, where I am. Um, so, so it's not on 100% difficulty today. I'm not looking to finish off my trainer in one ride and kill it all together. I'm hoping that that it will survive this uh, this uh, ride today. And I would like to get, would like to get credit for it. So, um, so that's what the plan is, and you guys can feel free to watch, check in, or ride along. All right, about ready to get started here. Feel free also to uh, chat if you guys want. You can ask your questions. You can uh, give me some encouragement um, or advice if you want, if you've done this before. I'm looking to try to do a steady 2.0 on the flats and on the major climbs, probably 2.5. I think is how I'm going to do this today. And that's all contention on the legs. This will be my longest week on the bike. I've already put in 140 or 160 miles this week. I'm trying to get that, finish off that trek challenge with 500 miles for the month, which I was able to do last night. I, I pulled it off by doing another 35K. But uh, needless to say, these legs have, have not seen this much mileage. Well, pretty much ever, actually. Pretty much ever. This, uh, this is already, not counting today, this already rivals probably some of the longest weeks I've had on the bike. So um, they've been flat miles. They've been recovery miles. I've been, I have been uh, stupid about it. I've been Trying to play it very conservatively, take it very easy um, with these longer hours in the saddle, but uh, but it's still hours, so you can't avoid that. Probably do 10 or 15 minutes of warm up, and then we'll we'll uh, start getting into the meat of this. You know, Greg, if you uh, if you tune in. Now or a little bit later, I think, I think I spied that you already did this about a week or so ago. So I'm curious to get some intel from you on how hard, how hard it is, and what the what the pacing needs to be. Does it need to be lower than what you normally think it needs to be? Um, it's very rare that I do a metric in Zwift as it is. Um, very rare that I would do that. So to do a metric and over 1,500 meters of climbing, of which I've only got 20 under my belt. <laughs> so uh, it's definitely uh, outside of the realm of my experience. Plus, uh, plus an extra uh, 140 miles coming into this thing with no rest days. So, 
Probably bordering on foolish at this point, I'm guessing. Probably bordering on foolish, but we march ahead. Oh, at least I get a little downhill break. Well, we got some long miles ahead of us, folks, so feel free to uh, to log your comments or questions in the chat. I'm going to be here for a while. I'll probably have an intermission, maybe about halfway into this thing, um, just to uh, get a nature break if need be and uh, maybe a snack break as well. So we'll have a little, little break here. I'm not going to try to do 100K uh, nonstop. I think that's a little bit unreasonable for, for me at my age. Not looking to try to win any records here. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I appreciate you joining in the chat today. Got a lot of punishment I'm subjecting myself to today. 100 kilometers. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I've got two bottles here full, and I'll probably take an intermission and refill those halfway through. So I will stay hydrated. I've got a. I'm uh, not trying to do any heat training today. So I've got the uh, thermostat set to a very comfortable temperature. Should be a uh, should be pleasant from the environmental side of things. Now, just got to make sure my legs can do 100 kilometers today. Appreciate the encouragement. Um, if any of you out there have already done, hey Sonia, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, if any of you done uh, the Mega Pretzel already and have some advice, please, please do share. Um, like I said, it's a rare day that I'll find myself doing a metric in Zwift as it is. So, uh, as to answer your question, um, as far as um, setup is concerned, the bike setup in Zwift is pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, it's just like pairing. Uh, a Bluetooth headphone to your to your phone. There's a, a little bit of one-time setup, but once the the trainer and the um, computer, or if you're using a tablet or something like that, once they've already established a prior connection, the setup is automatic at that point. Um, the only other thing is, is if you have a one-time setup calibration test or anything like that with your trainer, uh, when you get it out of the box, you might have a little bit of uh, setup time required with that, plus finding the right space and the internet connection. Um, I generally recommend using a hard line, um, an ethernet line with uh, Zwift. Um, you definitely don't want to get a Wi-Fi dropout at the end of your ride and have it not count. I had, uh, earlier this week I had uh, put in 50K and had a glitch right at the end and lost the whole ride in Zwift. I uh, tried to upload the fit files manually. I even tried to uncorrupt them with a little tool that Zwift Insider recommended. Nothing, nothing worked, so I lost those miles. Fortunately, my head unit was also dual recording, so I captured a portion of them, but I didn't get full credit. So that's... Uh, that's a basic setup. If you've got more advanced needs, like if you're doing uh, training with power, you've got a power meter on your bike. Um, I recommend use I recommend using the power meter on your bike where possible. Um, if you get good if you get good experience with that, uh, meaning if you don't get any dropouts in terms of your power transmission to the computer. I've got a setup here that allows me to have the best possible communication. I don't get a lot of dropouts every every now and then. I'll probably have one or two on this ride. Well, I'll get a brief dropout in power. But the advantage of that is, for those of you who train with power, you know that your numbers will be consistent between your indoor rides and your outdoor rides. In other words, the power that you see me putting out here on the screen is exactly the same amount of effort as it takes if I'm outdoors doing the same watts. Whereas, if you use two different pieces of equipment, um, regardless of how well you calibrate them, those numbers will never be 100% matched up. 
And uh, in some cases, if you don't calibrate your trainer in a while, you'll actually have a pretty significant discrepancy. Um, I know for me, um, I didn't do a uh, calibration on this trainer when I first bought it. Didn't know I needed to do that. I was kind of a newbie, I'll admit. And uh, for months, my power numbers kept slowly increasing. I'm thinking my training's working, but really it was just a trainer going steadily more out of calibration to the point where I was getting an extra 30 watt bonus uh, on some of my races that I I didn't uh, didn't didn't really have, and uh, it came quite as a shock to me last year when I discovered that I kind of had to reset everything and throw out all the all that those numbers and those PRs that I had over the summer last year. I had to pretty much throw those out. So it was uh, kind of a setback for me. That would be one one thing I would recommend. Um, just avoiding that that experience that I had. And a VR mode. You know, interesting that you say that. Um, there may be some some games. I, I'm pretty sure Zwift doesn't have any type of uh, VR capability, but there may be some games that offer you that. Um, you'll have to look. There's Ruby. There's Be Cool. Uh, Trainer Road has some has some stuff. There's uh, I'm trying to think of the the other ones out there. One of those may have a, a VR mode. You may want to check it out. That would be cool. With the only thing being is having something on your sweaty head for a period of time. Maybe maybe uncomfortable in the long run. But uh, you know, it's a uh, it just depends. Like here in Zwift, if you have access to a keyboard like I do, you can easily. Well, one moment. Let me get to Zwift here. You can easily switch between views. Um, you've got a number of different views here that you can you can use. So I wonder where the first person view is. Where's that? This is first person view. This is like you're actually on the bike. Most people use view one. And uh, sometimes if I'm racing, I'll use view six to see if there's a group overtaking me. So you do have some flexibility. In fact, I can go to a, go to an overhead view right now. Right now, we're climbing the foothills of uh, the Epic KOM in the reverse. It looks like. So, uh, so I'm gonna have my first big climb of the day already started. Not even really warmed up yet. Like I said, I do not, for those of you who have been following my rides, um, I do not have it on 100% today. My uh, trainer is starting to have some issues. It's making some noises it's not supposed to be making, and uh, I don't even know if it's going to finish the ride today. Mount Vontu just about finished it off, if you, see, if you uh, look at that ride. And uh, so ever since that ride, I've decided not to use 100% difficulty. Still got to push out watts though. But at least I don't have the, uh, the low cadence work that I, got, that I usually have to do on these climbs. I took a little bit of a hiatus last couple weeks from the live streams. Uh, last weekend, went out with uh, some of my teammates and did some real life climbing just to test the legs see if this training is doing me any good and it was it was pretty good two of the major climbs in the area we did uh skyuka which i feature on my uh, youtube channel and uh, another one green river cove which has 17 switchbacks or something like that so that's a formidable climb in and of itself we uh did both of those in one ride and it was uh, about 5,000 feet of climbing in total uh, for the day. And I actually enjoyed it. Felt pretty good. Felt pretty good during the ride. So Zwift can be used as a good training tool for uh, 
for some big real life climbs. If you've got maybe a, a bucket list climb coming up in your uh, your future, you can uh, you can use Zwift to prepare for that. Now I would recommend setting if your trainer can handle it. That is setting your trainer to 100% difficulty so that you can get the low cadence work in that you need on those steep sections. That's the only uh, drawback that I've had up till now using Zwift was I was setting it to 50% difficulty, so I really wasn't getting the full effect of the slope um, up until this year. I started my uh, training for some big climbs uh, back in April and slowly increasing the uh, mileage as well as the, uh, the climbing so that I can get to a day like today and have at least something other than a fool's hope of finishing it. The end goal being is I have a, uh, a Grand Fondo coming up in October and a bucket list climb of my own in September. Some big climbing. 8,000 feet and 10,000 feet um, respectively on those. So that's what this uh, is working towards. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't catch me dead uh, swifting with this much climbing. I just normally, uh, as a sprinter, I normally don't, uh, don't do a lot of climbing. But I'm trying to change my ways. Stop loving the flats so much. Alright, here we go. We are going, looks like we're going to, we're going to swing by and say hello to, uh, say hello to Alpha Zwift. So we're, as little as the uh, jungle circuit um, compares to uh, the rest of the uh, climbing I'm going to be doing today, it looks like we are doing it. I might as well do a bike change then. So if I'm going off tarmac. I might as well have the right bike. So, folks, today there will be some bike changes. There's going to be some bike changes today. And if I do them quick, I won't actually lose that much time. The end goal is to try to get the uh, make the effort as uh, as uh, efficient as possible. We'll say. Only got to do this uh, 10 more times. No, 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 6.6 bombs. I got, I got still got a lot more to do, more than 10 times of this, this effort. I'm not really sure where uh, I'm going to land at in terms of hours on the bike. Probably maybe in the four to three to four hour range, I'm guessing, 100 kilometers. All right, we're getting close to the top here. It's going to be almost time here for me to do a switch out. We'll see if see if we can keep up with Tiger Williams. See if it was a if it was a uh, good a good choice here. All right. Got to wait till I come to a stop, and let's get that mountain bike. I only own one mountain bike. That's it. All right, he's got a twelve-second lead on me. Well, now fourteen, 
and probably will grow a little bit while we're still on tarmac. Because mountain bikes hate tarmac. They do indeed. Everybody's getting motivated to cast now. All right. My first 100 meters of climbing are coming up. Well, of steady climbing, I should say. Although I guess that was that was steady climbing. Right there, we did. <clears throat> All right. Tiger Williams got a 31 second lead. And it'll probably grow for a little while here. Yep. This is not a race, by the way. Hey, Steve. Yeah, I'm doing 100 kilometers today in this uh, this Wift. That's uh, 60 plus miles, 62 miles. So I'm taking it easy. Not looking to smash any PRs today. Having some 